Hello everyone. This is our last game in our uh, variation of uh, the closed Sicilian uh, starting at move 6, F4, and E6. Again, all these games are on a playlist. This is game 21 and uh, with the white pieces again, Boris Baskey. And with the black pieces, uh, Vlastimil Hort. This game took place in West Germany. 1981, too strong in the legendary Grandmasters face-off. Game started out. Spassky, E4, C5, closed Sicilian. And these are all typical and standard continuations. D3, D6, there's F4, E6, most principled response. Or one of the most principled responses, knight of three and knight g e7 castle. And now we see a kind of um, unorthodox continuation here, bishop d7. The normal continuation is castles. However, here black throws kind of a monkey wrench in the situation by not castling, knowing that white's normal uh, strategy is to play f4, f5. Sometimes bishop e3, queen d2, etc. Knight h4 and try to attack on the king side. Black delays the uh, uh, placement of his king. All right. And attempts to play a game whereby he starts his play on the queen side first. So it gives white a little bit of dilemma. Okay. So white continue with the king side attack. Without the black being committed to the king side, or should he try to stop the counterplay on the queen side from black? So these are the two uh, questions. So let's see what uh, what Spassky did. So Spassky continued to develop. He played bishop e3, and now this move is uh, threatened d4. So knight d4. And now we see rook b1 here. So we see that Spassky is taking a little time to perhaps uh, counteract white, excuse me, black on the queen side. Rook c8. And now the bishop drops back to f2. All right. Now. Knight E to C6 is played. Knight E, C6. Knight E2. And now Queen A5. Okay. This pawn is attacked here. And now Knight E takes D4. Just trying to make sure I don't mix the, the knight captures up. And now c3. Alright. More pieces are traded. And now the bishop comes to c6. And now at this point, we see the move g4. So f5 is definitely on the menu. And the king is still in the middle of the board. Okay, especially as we had the queen way on the other side of the board. Okay, so now black decides the castle. All right. And what's interesting is already uh, black's, excuse me, white's attack is pretty dangerous. And after f5 if you notice too there's no real uh danger from black on the queen side so it's like white has just taken some measures just to make sure nothing is going on over there and now he just starts vigorously attacking on the other side of the board so f5 is played f6 f takes e6 queen takes a2 this is usually a bad sign um you know, your king comes under fire and then the queen is on the other side of the, the earth uh, uh, grabbing pawns. All right. So, 
Ah, that's a that's a tough move. He gets cut off, B3, and we saw this theme uh, in another game where the queen was on A5. If you look a few videos ago, the queen was on A5 and the move D5 was played, cutting the queen off from returning over to the king side. And you see the same type of thing. The queen is way on the other side of the board, and uh, in this case, the A file. And now a simple pawn move, B3, cuts the queen from uh, returning. So, rook f e8 is played. All right. And now Spassky plays to move queen d1. All right. And now rook a1 has to be a consideration. So, for example, if rook takes now, then rook a1. Where does the queen go? Queen b2. And then bishop e1. And then the idea, you know, this pawn had to be protected. And then the idea is rook f2. With no real out for the queen. So that was the idea behind queen d1. So queen d1 is played. He has to take time to get the queen out of there. a4. b4. c takes b4. C takes B4, Queen A4, and now B3 by Spassky. <clears throat> Sorry, B5. And now what's dangerous about this is Spassky is, is basically the idea here is Spassky wants to go into an ending where his rook can get to the seventh rank easily. Alright, that's the best way to explain it. So so now watch bishop takes. You see? Now queen takes. Bishop takes and there it is. Rook takes a seven. Uh, B seven, you see? Rook's rook on the seventh rank. Rook finally gets the pawn back. G five, right? Wanna get the other rook there too. Right, but besides the, besides that, get threat just to come here. You see how the rooks are lined up. So rook e5. Rook takes a7 with tempo on the bishop. Bishop to b5. G takes. Bishop takes and now with tempo. Again, bishop takes f6. I mean, g takes f6, bishop takes f6, bishop d4. And this just wins the exchange because of the pin. If he tries to go here, it's the same deal again. So, bishop h4. Bishop takes e5. D takes e5. Now, bishop h3. And the game is pretty much over. Rook B1, a few adrenaline moves, Rook C5, and then just Rook A5 with the with the pin here, and then uh, Hort resign. Okay, so that is the end of our discussion of the line um, beginning on move 6 with F4 and E6. And now we'll be looking at some other lines, one being a favorite of Gary Kasparov from the black side, of course. Probably the most famous Sicilian player ever. So what did what did he play against the uh, closed Sicilian? So we'll be looking at some of those games coming up. But just a brief summary of this game, right, between two strong grandmasters. We saw uh, how Spassky deals with a slightly unorthodox move. He didn't panic, and I'm talking about Bishop D7 in particular because normal is just castling. And basically, black is not committing his king and trying to get a head start on his queenside counterplay. And this happens in many different variations, of uh, many different openings. But the general principle is that you continue to play in the center. All right? The king is in the center of the board. You continue your normal strategy. And you see that here with Spassky. He just plays bishop e3, knight d4. And what he does here, 
is he just sets his position up um, in order to, you know, uh, make sure there's no weakness involved. He protects the B pawn prophylactically because these are moves that you would do uh, normally anyway in the position. Rook C8. Now Bishop F2. Knight E C6. And then he goes on with his traditional strategy of eliminating the knight off of D4. Bishop c6, and now with the pieces, with three pieces uh, tucked away on the queen side, he goes for his king side attack, right? Because the board's about to become open, and the king will now be in danger in the middle. And we can just see quickly how fast um, Black's position collapses, especially after he grabs his pawn on a2. So come another theme again. Grabbing the pawn on the other side of the board and then cutting cutting off the retreat of the the uh, enemy so that he cannot assist in the defense of the king. Remember that if you're gonna play the close Sicilian, you must be willing to sacrifice uh, pawns. All right, for the initiative, it's very important. And we can see Spassky just creating a position where he gets the rook to the, to the seventh rank. Powerful move. And he just carries through. This is like all initiative here. Wins the exchange. And then pin him and win him at the end. I hope you enjoyed that game. Again, uh, all these games are on a playlist. In nice logical order according to variations and um, please like subscribe check the links below the DVDs books associated with this opening there um, questions and comments appreciate it and um, yeah please donate if you can I appreciate it very much thank you and um, our next variation that will be will be uh, going into starting at uh, move six is um, After I'm sorry, after F4 is Rook B8. So we'll be getting into uh, you know Black's attempt to create immediate uh, counterplay, and this is what I this is what um oops sorry about that different different game, but this is what what we'll be looking at just to prepare you mentally for it. So after G6, G3, right after our typical. Typical uh, position. Hold on, after e4. Sorry, I'm all mixed up right now. e4, c5, knight c3. Right, g6. Here we go. g3, bishop g7. d3. Here we go. Now we look normal. This is what we're going to be looking at. Is Black's immediate, immediate uh, idea to uh, counterattack. Okay, so we'll be looking at looking at these games and um, ideas on the next video, and I'll see you there.